My name is Michael Vance. My partners, my family and I, we run a cattle grazing operation. Our main business is, is trying to raise cattle in a you know regenerative format and, and bulls that are raised on grass only without being fed that, that can hold up and, and really do the job that, that the, our customers need them to and try to make cattle that are more efficient on forage. That's kind of our specialty. We kind of have a different approach than maybe your traditional cattle operator. And we don't look down on anybody that does it differently than us. We just have an approach that works for us. There's several different reasons we've, we've gone down the regenerative path. One, I mean, just being very upfront is, is it's a lot more cost friendly. Um, we, we didn't inherit a lot of machinery or equipment and we need to learn to, how to operate with low inputs. And so it was kind of easy for us to go that route because we wanted to do more with less. We've tried to figure out how, how can we operate without having to buy lots and lots of equipment, but the equipment that we have is very purpose driven. Really, as we got into it, we're more, uh, we're, we're hunters, we're conservationists. And so we started seeing a lot of the degradation that, you know, within our own operations by managing just for cattle grazing. And so it made us be more aware of, you know, what's going on in our ecosystem. And as we learn more and more, and we learn about the soil, a lot of things we were doing traditionally were uh, negative for the ecosystem and negative for the soil and as a whole, and which in turn is actually negative for the cattle. In a natural environment, we can we can graze cattle without being any sort of detriment to the wildlife. Actually, they, they're helping the wildlife if we do things correctly year in, year out. And we've gotten excited. We've, we've been able to create some, you know, high choice and prime grass-fed beef and truly grass-finished beef. And so um, it's allowed us to be able to create a very niche, very unique product with some of our old school genetics that you can't just find anywhere, and it's and it's a we feel like it's a healthier product because it's uh it's you know they graze naturally without chemicals and without a lot of inputs. But we're learning more and more that you know the, the things we do out here do affect the the nutrient density and the quality of that meat and how it affects our diet and, and it also affects our the health of our families that, um, that are eating that beef. So within our regenerative management approach, there's a couple of different tools that have become very important for us to be able to, to carry out what we want to, um, you know, the goals we have for our cattle operation, but then also be able to maintain the property and improve the value of the property. And the first piece of equipment is we, we run large 20-foot batwing mowers. And we do that because we can clean up anything that the cattle aren't able to graze. Now we're very timely with that. We don't like to mow during nesting seasons. We try to be very aware of the ecosystem and the other animals and the, the bird species. Since we do not apply herbicides, we use a, a mower as a tool to be able to manage for brush and an overpopulation of maybe some of our browse to where it doesn't take over a pasture and completely neglect the cattle forage species. And so we'll mow it, the weeds down to the height that the cattle grazed it. And what it does is, one, it knocks down a lot of that those weeds to where they do, they are still food for wildlife, especially some of the ones that we do let go ahead and go to seed. But then we're able to hit those very mature plants with a mower and then get them back into a regenerative growing state to where they have a high nutrient uh, plant and high nutrient material for those cattle to graze the next cycle through, the next rotation through that pastures. You know, since we graze year round, it's very important for us to have a green growing root in the ground year round. In this part of the world, we have no trouble growing warm seasons, but cool seasons can be kind of the, the issue. That can be the hold up. Our stocking rate is based on how much cool season grass we can grow. So one thing that we do on all of our open ground is we, we no-till in cover crops. What we're seeing is, you know, increased efficiency with cattle. We can run more cattle per acre. We're seeing an increased diversity in forage species. We're seeing a, a cattle that graze on their own and make a living on their own through the winter. We're not having to go unroll hay for them every day of the winter. On the wildlife side, pretty much every pasture is a working food plot. And so everything that we do for the cattle, we want it to also be a benefit to the wildlife. And that's what we're seeing with that. So we're getting a double return on our investment with the, with the cover crops. Our management style is more of a low input style and one of the problems that everybody's running into now is a human resource issue. It's, it's hard to find good help and it's hard to find knowledgeable help. We're good at cattle, we're good at grazing, we're not real good with equipment, um, we're not really good at anything outside of the, the cattle spectrum. So what we found is anything that we do um, that we're not good at, we like to hire a third party and that includes even maintenance of our tractors. We don't even change the oil on our tractors anymore and we want a service truck out from United Ag and Turf to come out twice a year and go through our tractors and service them and walk through them before we get in the field. Tell us, you know, issues that may be coming up. Hey, you know, these seals are wearing out a little bit or 
Um, these cylinders may be needing to be, you know, redone soon. And so it's really nice to have somebody that's professional and knowledgeable to be able to walk through our equipment, get it service ready, but then also kind of give us a heads up of issues that we may see with some of these older tractors that we run. We found within our business, it's best to pay people that are good at what they do, and we stick to what we're good at, because we found that we actually usually cost ourselves more money if we try to do things that we're not really good at or that we're not really educated on. When we can get a, you know, a service truck out from United Ag and Turf, it allows us the ability to be able to pay them whenever we need help and, and pay for top-notch, professional, um, highly educated, people to come out here and work on our equipment and we don't have to pay somebody 365 days a year to have on hand if something breaks down. So it really fits our program and our management style really well. We believe this, this is going to be one of the most diverse properties in all of East Texas from a not only a grazing and ag standpoint but it's got several different ecosystem types within uh, the property and it's got you know world-class waterfowl, world-class whitetail, um, always good pig hunting down here on the Trinity River, but we're excited to see, you know, that continue to grow and we think this is going to be one of the greatest properties in all of East Texas. We just, we're glad to be a part of it and we're hoping to bring it back kind of to the historic Trinity River bottom that a lot of us know the Trinity River as, you know.